thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Woo, woo. Nice intro. Yeah. Great uh, beat. Uh, th- thank you to Sammy Beal for making that uh, that lovely music at the beginning. Thank you. Um, you can follow him at Samuel.Beal on Instagram. Um, i just like to introduce everybody. This is Film for Thought. This is the first episode. Uh, I'm the host, Michael Lardisawa. I'm here with Gigi. You say Hi, something? Hi, I'm Gianna. And if you want to know my Instagram, because whatever, it's Claire Master Winja. Follow me if you can. <laughs> What's up? And we have Ben here, too. Hey, I'm Ben. You can follow me on Instagram at Ben M. Goldberg. Spelled the normal way. <laughs> <laughs> Carmen. Yeah, I'm Carmen. Carmen Denning. That's it. Beautiful. <laughs> Great. Can't find her anywhere. So. Can't find me anywhere. Anywhere. Don't even try. Don't even try. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right, so the first episode of Film for Thought, uh, well, we thought a lot about what we're going to talk about, but I think the the it just it just hit so well, like getting the topic of, or so the topic is uh, R-rated movies and TV show, or like superhero movies and TV. Yeah. And um, just today, as we're recording this, uh, Joker was the first R-rated picture to hit uh, one billion dollars. Billion dollars. <laughs> so holy shit! This was so movie, great yeah. timing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got the message like, t- like two hours before we were recording, like that this had happened. So it's exciting to talk about. Yeah, for sure. We're gonna be the first people ever to talk about the it. First ones ever to hear about it. And the the <laughs> the artwork also goes so well. That was so unplanned, oh, by the way. Yeah, the Joker. Oh my so, god, I forgot. That's good. <laughs> so the artwork is by a friend of mine. Uh, you can follow him at uh, the Slurpy Art Portfolio on Instagram. Uh, he's a great dude. Um, but originally, I, uh, he just like gave me that piece. It feels like uh, if you need it, and it's just like a dope picture that he made of uh, Joaquin Phoenix dressed as Joker, and it's lovely. It's awesome. Please check it out. Yeah, it's please bomb. support him. But yeah. Okay, so Joker, one billion dollars. Holy shit! <laughs> I feel yeah. like, like that's definitely a game changer for the industry. Yeah. Oh. Like, uh, at least beforehand superhero movies and tv weren't were very like uh like one hand tied behind their back mm-hmm. at least till recent history and the way that it's like projected i feel like like uh what are some of like the older like superhero movies that had that i don't know they, they all feel so so campy yeah like if you see the sam raimi films for spider-man stuff like that like the original incredible hulk yeah oh yeah i'm gonna take this off I think, oh, one thing we were, oh, that's going to be hard with the headphones on. <laughs> I wish we had the cameras for this episode. Yeah. Smart. I'm taking off we my sweater. We right struggle with the hoodie. But no, uh, we were actually talking about this earlier. Me and Carmen were talking about this. Uh, we, I feel like the audience for superhero movies has grown up, kind of. Yes. So as they grew up, the films kind of grew up with us, you know? Because, like, when I was, like, eight or nine, Tobey Maguire was Spider-Man, and the worst... I, I remember like the most gory thing that happened I think was Doc Ock getting killed by his right son. remember when he like yeah. got stabbed in the stomach that was probably the most gory thing or, that happened or um, even in Spider-Man 3 mm-hmm. like well that movie personally gave me nightmares that shit with the venom and stuff like yeah. that that, that yeah, was a little bit too scary. intense yeah, but like at, at, at the moment you know that was like as far as they were gonna like push that envelope which is like what a PG-13 rating by by the MPAA like mm-hmm. it's it's not that much and yeah I think that that's that's right like as people who've seen superheroes and have grown up with these movies have grown up I think their like perspective has changed and that like involves really like what like uh like superhero movies has evolved too like yeah. tv yeah yeah they've they, they've changed a lot i don't know I, like like those old token bar movies like they weren't really that scary but like we were all young you know and now we're older and i feel like the audience is hungry we're like now that we're adults we're like all right we want something violent like let's go like r-rated also it's with film everything is like being like flipped on its head you know like Mm-hmm. It's all about like the villain story now. So they're just like, what if we made superheroes more gory? Like when yeah. we watched Logan earlier, we're just like, it. It's it's as gory as it almost as gory as it can get. It's like yeah. you said, it's like the perfect R-rated superhero movie. Yeah, you know? because because Logan's like Wolverine's superpower, right, is the fact that he has like knives in his hands, 
So just by nature, that's going to be one of the most like, like bloody superhero movies because, like, if you look at like I don't know like other superheroes, Spider Man has webs. He just like kind of. Yeah, Spider Man doesn't sticky. even kill people. Either. No, he like, doesn't. Right. <laughs> Batman has a rule; he doesn't kill people. Yeah. Right? But Wolverine, his whole thing is just uh, stabbing, stabbing. Like yeah, no, <laughs> knives as personal as it gets. And it's <laughs> also like using like the perspective of like R rated movies and stuff like that to an advantage. Like for example. And Deadpool, like, they have to use it. Because, like, like mm-hmm. that dude is, like, like an anti-hero by nature. Like, the shit he says is inherently not, like, shouldn't be PG-13. Or at least it's not as entertaining. It doesn't give, like, the creative, like, epithet in order for it to be, like, used correctly. I feel like as a character, like, some of them are to be, like, used as R-rated. And it's just like, not to use, like, the R-rated label so loosely either because yeah. i feel like like the dark knight which i just watched yesterday for the first time i think for at, like in a really long time uh my favorite movie <laughs> <laughs> like that movie i feel like that movie does well with a pg-13 rating too yeah like yeah. it wouldn't have killed that movie to have an r-rated rating basically but at the same time, like, I think that's a good example, like, a multi-million dollar superhero movie done right within its, like, grasp. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. The The Dark Knight is interesting because, like, it's, it's definitely regarded as, like, one of the darker, I mean, like, the darker superhero movies. I mean, Heath Ledger kind of, like, got a very dark for this role, like even, like, outside of the realm of, like, what's actually happening in the film. I mean, he was, like, locked in his apartment doing pills. He actually, like, pretty much, you know, sacrificed his life for this role. This is kind of, like, common knowledge. But, like, it's still a PG-13 movie, you know? And I don't know, like, I feel like that one was different because it was more, like, uh, I don't know. As a, If you compare it to, like, Deadpool, Deadpool is, like, like you said, it has to be R-rated. Like, that's the nature of Deadpool. I think that Deadpool was R-rated more so for also, like, the humor, not necessarily because of his personality or, like, the fact that he's a violent character in general, but the humor in it is very Very explicit, yes, and it's not necessarily something that, I guess, moms or dads would want younger kids to be watching, whereas in The Dark Knight, the humor is... It's kind of, like, dry humor, I guess. Yeah, there isn't much of it, really. <clears throat> yeah. Right, it's... so it's, like, it's a dark film, and then it's rated PG-13 because it doesn't go into so much violence where it should be rated R. But I feel like, I, f- I personally feel like it does have enough violence to be considered R rating, but the thing is, because when Batman was released, what, 2008 or something like that? Yeah, I think so. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 2008. Yeah. Yeah. So it was released in two thousand eight, and two thousand eight, like you did not want your multi million dollar project to be rated as no. R rated. You know what no. I mean? Yeah. Like I think the Joker sets a good example. Is like, all right, so we can make a substantial amount of money and like have like the like, clout as like in the in the industry and like in general, the the general public are liking these movies that are like have these ratings. Yeah, it doesn't it does seem to be a trend, right? Like maybe. I don't know, maybe we can connect it to the the internet being, like, becoming more and more popular and more, like, prevalent and pretty much being everywhere now. Like, I was going to say accessible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, accessible to everybody. Pretty much. I think because, yeah, because, like, kids are pretty much able to see whatever now on the internet, so we're a lot more desensitized, so we're becoming less and less conservative which what, with what we're, like, allowing our kids to see, I think, maybe, I don't know. I'm not a parent, but that's what it seems <laughs> like. <laughs> oh, not that I know. Yeah, but... (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, No, no. Uh, But, wait, one thing, though. When was the Deadpool comic made? I don't know about comics. The original comic? Yeah, Michael, that's your... Like a good while ago. The 80s, maybe? Yeah. Let me see. It's been a good while. So, why wait until 2016 to make it? Uh, It was in production for, like, 11 years or something like that. 11 years? Yeah, because, like, Ryan Reynolds, he was talking about... um, how he was Deadpool in the one X-Men film and it like didn't get the character right at all and then from that start point they were like no we need to switch this up we need to make it like the real character and apparently they had like the idea rolling and they eventually got it into production to become a film um so the first appearance of Deadpool was in New Mutants uh issue 87 February 1991 
1991. Yeah. And he was really a D-list character. Yeah, throughout he the wasn't comics. very big. Like, until very recent. What I think his run in... He didn't get his own series till 97. And that was really, like... Like, they just, like, threw that out there, basically. they It didn't have, like, a lot of backing to it. Not until very recently did it, like, actually get a lot of, like, stamina going. Mm-hmm. And, like, now it's, like, one of the biggest, like, running issues in Marvel, I think. Yeah. But, yeah, like, when it comes to, like, a character like that or, or for example, like, the, the kick-ass comic books, yeah. like, those are, like, super gruesome. Like, yeah, they're, like, those, extreme. Like, I was oh rereading God. them today before we were doing this recording, and they're, like, <laughs> extremely gruesome. Like, I, the last time I read them was, like, four years ago. And I feel like they do a, a very good job at, like, translating that into uh, a movie. They definitely tone it down for what it was, and, like, <laughs> the political comments that <laughs> some yeah. of the characters have, they <laughs> definitely tone that down. That movie was wild. <laughs> but at the same time, like, they do a good job at, like, projecting action and, like, and the things they do change, I feel like they do it successfully. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's still, yep. if it, yeah, it's it's still an R-rated movie. Like, the classification was there. You think Kick-Ass kind of, like, made way for Deadpool in a way? I feel it like in 2010. Did. So, like, that was a good six years before. Whoops. But, but then you said Deadpool was in production for 11 years. Yeah, like it was, like, he, a process. Like, I don't know if they started, like, doing anything as far as, like, script writing or storyboarding or anything, but mm-hmm. it was definitely a major idea in either Sony or, Mar- like, the Disney side of Marvel Cinematic Universe. I just know that Ryan Reynolds wanted to be a part of it so badly, so he was kind of the main guy to come up with that, and that's also why he did Deadpool 2, like, okay. the second one. Okay, he, yeah. since he is Deadpool, he, like, wanted to keep that going. And then I know he and the director, like, had, like, some kind yeah, of falling out or something. Had, they had a yeah. falling out because uh, the original director, Tim Miller, he wanted to go more of, like, an action-based movie. Right. While Ryan Reynolds wanted to do something more comedy-based. Hmm. Uh, and they had, like, uh, creative differences in general. So after that, they, they changed directors for the second one because Ryan Reynolds was... Pretty sure he's executive producer as well in the second yeah. one, if not yeah. the first like one too. Ron Reynolds, like baby. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's why he loves it so much. Wow. Like I okay. mean, he has his like the suit. He like stole it, and he's like, "That's my suit." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wakes up in the suit. <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, that's my suit." <laughs> I'm Deadpool. Yeah. <laughs> Shows up to other sets with. Hey Ryan, the suit. <laughs> what, what's, uh, what's up? What's going on, man? Uh, I'm not Ryan. I'm Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's not here right now. <laughs> Like runs in the back and take off the suit really quick. Comes back. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, you man, saw my buddy back suit? there. <laughs> what do you mean? What suit? What are you talking about? <laughs> He's wearing, he's wearing a suit at the Oscars. He's like, oh, man, where do you have a suit? I was like, oh, wait, let me give me a second. He just takes off, it, <laughs> takes off his close. suit. <laughs> um, yeah, but I feel like what you said, Ben, does, like, I, did, I do believe, like, Kick-Ass paved the way for, like, at least comic book-based adaptations in rated R, or, like, superheroes mm-hmm. in general. Yeah. Because, like, at least the, the comic books are really, are really underground. Like, I, I can't even remember the, the production. I'm, I know it's not, like, Image Comics who originally produced it. But, like, if you see, I think the most modern adaptation to, like, comic books, like, they're, like, like sole proprietorship like that is, like, from, like, Kick-Ass. I think a straight comparison can be seen to the boys, like uh, oh, the yeah. the new uh, prime prime original series, yeah. because that's a really R rated show, and I I thoroughly enjoyed it, and but it's like they very much tone it down compared to the comics as they do in Kick Ass because that was a comic. Oh yeah, everything is a comic. That I didn't know comic. that. Like yeah, I, I don't know enough about comics. I'm glad you. I'm glad we have you to. I <laughs> but yeah, like like just to put it in a perspective. They originally pitched the idea of the boys, like, that comic book to Image Comics. And they're, like, notorious for, like, letting, like, it's, like, a mature audience, like, you know, like, uh, for, like, comic book readers. Not, like, Marvel or DC. That's kind of, like, you know, like, preteens or little kids. Mm. So Image Comics normally gets away with, like, doing a lot, a lot more, like, shake, like, creatively. Okay. But it was so yeah. bad that Image Comics was like, we're not yeah. going to release this. Oh, wow. <laughs> so they went to Dynamite. Oh, I can't remember what. Uh, Dynamite something. But. What year was the, were the comics released? Do you know? The, uh, let me check. Wow. Everything's up. 
Yep, pretty Everything much. Is a you'd, be, you'd be surprised. Scott Pilgrim? Yeah, I was, huh? Mm -hmm. Wow, dude. <laughs> I did not know that. That's by Dynamite Entertainment. Those were the publishers. But yeah, uh, I've not read the entire thing, but from what I've been told from my friends and what I've read personally, yeah, they they definitely push the envelope, per okay. se. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> a Yo, nice way of putting it. What about Watchmen? Oh, like, have you guys seen about? the new series? No, I don't. I don't. I don't know about the new series. I haven't seen it. I'm really into Watchmen, but I've not seen the new series. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I'm. Con I'm. I'm confused by the new series. I don't know. Like I just, it came out of nowhere for me. I was like, whoa, what? You already made the movie. But that was a the movie came out a while ago though, like mm -hmm. 2012, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Do we? Do we think that was a good movie? I don't know. I liked it. Watchmen. Like, yeah, it was good, right? Or no? I I have my you like have your comic book opinions about it. I got my comic book <laughs> opinions. Like some like some of the, I love the comic book. The comic I actually wear the comic book. It's, it's good. Yeah, it's like the art where everything's amazing. Like they yeah. just did a great job. Yeah. And I like I love the movie. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that the movie's bad. I okay. just like I just have for Zack Snyder some like reserved comments. Yeah. yeah. Because like uh, some people like some people do think that he like. To basically use all the panels as like a storyboard, which he did to a certain extent. Well, is that so bad though? Yeah. It's not bad, but it's like, uh, it's like where do you put the like degree of creativity from like changing something into a comic book and adapting it into like a movie or a TV show? Because mm -hmm. for Kick Ass and The Boys, like Kick Ass specifically, like the way the comic book ends and the way the 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 movie ends. Like, the movie ends in an even more fantastical way than the comic book, which is kind of weird. But it's, like, it, it plays so well. Like, it, it goes to show, like, the different areas of creativity even using the same line of material. Mm. Like, if you see, like, all these different, like, superhero movies or, like, the re reiterations of Batman or even the the Joker. Yeah. Like, what we just saw, like, it's, it's such a different take on the same character. Yeah. And you can either see it do super well, like Heath Ledger or and, and Joaquin Phoenix, or you can do see it do, like, very poorly, like... Jared Leto! Yeah. 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 We all knew that was coming. Uh, piece of garbage. And it's... The thing is, it's <laughs> the same character, like, back to back to back, but at the same time, it all depends on the creativity that you put in it and, like, how, you know, how it's used. Yeah. I think we're forgetting the greatest Joker of all time, though. Mark Hamill. <laughs> Mark yeah. Hamill is the greatest Joker of all time. I, Joker. I love Joaquin Phoenix. I, he deserves <laughs> an Oscar. But Mark Hamill has oh, a 100%. special place on my heart. I like Mark Hamill's animated Joker, but I don't know. I feel like it, for me, like, uh, and this is just going to be a classic meme. Like, I'm always going to be defending the Dark Knight. But Heath Ledger. <laughs> oh, my God. Heath Ledger. I mean, first of all, like... It's you just a like the state. Um, it's like different. the state for everybody there in the audience. Um, that Ben's favorite <laughs> movie is Dark Knight. So yeah. he's, 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 he has some biases in yeah. here. <laughs> but I mean, like, it's not like he just did the animated show either. He did all the video games. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no, so he did all the like, video. No, he Whoa. killed it. He killed it. Yeah. Let's, let's not get that second best. <laughs> Strong second. Mark no, I'd <laughs> argue that the, he has. A definite first place. Really? Yes. I like know Mark, a lot of people. He has like a think, special place up there that can't be like. Like the taken animated out. series definitely created a staple in yes. like everybody. Mm -hmm. Like just for everybody in general, like the way the character was so changed and moved and everything. Just like when I like read a comic book or look at the Joker, I envision like Mark Hamill's voice, like mm -hmm. reading yes, that dialogue. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> that was a terrible joke. He <laughs> yeah. was very like he was very he was good. He was and in those great, Arkham like, games, mm -hmm. does that man know how to voice act? Like it's yeah. really good. Yes. He doesn't even have to like see his character on screen to know how to portray him. Yeah, it's yeah. just crazy cool. He does a great job. I don't know. I feel like just like the the like the acting of Heath Ledger in the, in the Dark Knight was just so like incredible because he threw his whole body into it like. I mean, like, oh no, definitely. Like, like even like the, the like the I saw that last night, like, and always, he's like, like chewing on something. Oh yeah. And like, like he's always like, the, yeah, it's like the the it's very like, small like body language. Like he's always like licking his lips and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 It's a very and, subtle. And, like Mark Hamill did such a great job, but just because by the fact that he's in the video games and animated, you don't see his like body acted. 
and that's why Heath Ledger. Well, that's uh, that's that's, that's, why that's a we difference. Like his if voice you're like, acting if so you're much, labeling though. like the it's different, about, yeah, yeah. It, if you're labeling different, like, well, it, there are two different like genres, like you know, like voice acting and actual <coughs> acting. Mm. But like, if you, I, it was still Mark Hamill holds a special place yeah. in my heart. Like, it's there's it's just a, like a top charter that he can't. Yeah, be at yeah. least yeah. at least for from. my personal preference. But like, if you're gonna compare like Joaquin Phoenix mm. and like Heath Ledger. That's a different story. Though both of them were acting. That's the yeah. thing. Yeah. I mean, th- dude, they both killed. I mean, I feel like we could go round and round all day and I would love to about the Joker. <laughs> which one's the about best? Heath Ledger. Okay, but which one's the worst now? Jared Leto or Jack Nicholson? Jared Leto. Jared Leto. <laughs> Jack Nicholson was all right, okay? Like it's Jack, well, it's Jack a Tim Nicholson. Film, Jack so Nicholson very, like, was very artistic. cartoony. Like yeah. he he did his thing for what yeah. for what it was worth. It was a different. I feel like those were different Batman movies. Like they were they were Tim Burton movies. Yeah, that's exactly. why <laughs> they were completely they were, like yeah. that was not the same. Yeah, with the with the nipples and the costume and <laughs> yeah. everything. No, that, that wasn't the Tim Burton one. That was the George Clooney one. That oh, the nobody George likes. Clooney one. <laughs> oh my god. They had the the credit card, yeah. uh, the the Batman credit <laughs> card or whatever. Personally, my favorite Batman movie though. <laughs> those George Clooney one thousand bad dollars. <laughs> exactly. but, black card. but yeah like uh, black card. when you compare like at least the last three roles of the joker that's what uh heath ledger jared leto and joaquin phoenix <laughs> you get to see that these these three people like actively throw themselves into this role yeah like yeah. they're all the three of them are method actors mm. the three of them like went in completely yep. that's true two out of three got good results <laughs> <laughs> one of them just scared everybody yeah <laughs> and one of them is still trying to recover <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Seriously. what has he been in since then sorry i don't, don't know Jared Leto? yeah the Met Gala, he looked nice then. <laughs> yeah. the Met Gala. I think he's, he, he might be like in a, something new. He's retired. Yeah. <laughs> he retired. Like. <laughs> I feel like he's doing something new. I think I saw something about him being in something else. I don't know. I did see a lot about how he was angry about Joaquin, though. Maybe he he's making. Yeah, well, yeah, he was just like, uh, nah. What? <laughs> I don't know. He was like, I didn't really mean that. Right. Nerd. He might be focusing on his band like, for all we know. I don't know. Read like the the shit yeah, he did he's on 30 say. seconds to Mars. Wait. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did you guys read about the shit he did on set of Jared Leto? Yeah, yeah that's dude. what I'm saying. He scared a ton of people. Robbie, that was the only like, like, oh, like dead rats, rats and shit. Yeah. Rats. I heard he sent her used them. No, too. and dildos Ew. or something like that. Oh god. Yeah, dude. and that's like everybody in the cast. That's not even like a Joker thing though. No. That's just like a Jared Leto that's being like weird thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's just yeah. a Jared Leto like, being weird. <laughs> And them, like, that. actively talking about it in interviews and shit. Being yeah, like, he's just like, yeah, this is uh, just Everybody just look at each other like, uh, are we <laughs> letting this <laughs> just slide? Like, okay. <laughs> is this something, like, real? We needed now? a psychiatrist on set at all times. Um, I actually don't know if that's true. That would be kind of... <laughs> that would be kind of crazy. <laughs> well, yeah. let's see. He's... There's a... Let's see. There's a movie called Gucci Guilty. Huh? <laughs> what? It's a short <laughs> film. Yeah. It's a short <laughs> film. Wait, it's a short oh, okay. film okay. that he's in it. And oh, then there's Jared Leto is? Oh, yeah, man. Jared Leto's in it. <laughs> oh man, it's been rough. He's <laughs> going back to shorts. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad it is. And then there's a movie called Morbius. That's in post production. But actually, I'm reading here that there's an untitled Jared Little Joker project that's being yeah, announced. Yeah, that's what I thought I heard about. It's called a Joker. About... No, no, delete that. Delete it. I mean, <laughs> like we said, DC hasn't been doing so great, except for this recent Joker. So oh, wait. Right? Well, if we're going to talk about DC doing well, we're going to talk about James Gunn real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about him. All right, so... <laughs> Besides everything he said on Twitter. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, we talked about this, but let's go back up. What did he do on Twitter? Do we have to um, talk? Wait, I don't know. Do we, do we want to talk about files? what he did on Twitter? I don't know. I, re- I don't remember it, so. But see, he said some fucked up baby jokes. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> he basically said some fucked up baby okay, jokes. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Something about like the the giving tree and a child or some oh shit like that. I, I can't I can't remember. Yes, Why are we going into detail? We just know it was bad. The end. It was oh, bad. Yeah. <laughs> but the 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 point is, they brought him to do the suicide the second Suicide Squad movie, and honestly, they can only go up from right 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 now. Yeah. Rock bottom. But 
like James Gunn, like as a director, he has a vision when it comes to these type of movies. Like he put his own personal aesthetic, and I feel like that's like like for Guardians. Guardians are a D list superhero group, and then when that movie was announced and James Gunn was in it, like a lot of comics starting rolling out, and I started reading reading a lot of Guardians because of it, and like he did that comic book so well, like. Honestly, like, it's still, like, kind of, like, underground for, like, Marvel comics, but mm-hmm. still, like, in the movies, like, they have, like, such a pronounced, like, position and everything. So there's, so there's, like, now, like, new comics because of the movie? Yeah, this yeah. always happens. Okay. Like, they always change. There's always new comics because the movies come out, there like, a whole new, like, yeah. theme or series that they comes out with the, com- yeah. Yeah. I feel okay. like they always sort of change the the character design like yeah. the way characters look depending on it's the like actor they evolve too yeah, yeah. it's kind of weird but they don't make him exactly look they don't make them look exactly the same but at the same time it's like sort of similar like you can see a resemblance like, like have they changed nick fury yet i know he used to be white and then no like, he used to be white yeah and is then, he still oh, white yeah. in the comics no, no? he's he black never that's be white what again. i thought no. yeah that's what i thought i know they changed uh, okay, I just looked up James Gunn because I I know about him, but I didn't really know, like, everything he's done. So just for anyone who might be confused, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Movie 43, Super, um, what else? Uh, James Gunn, James Gunn. No, I, I'd like to point out, he worked on the uh, Scooby-Doo movies. Oh, oh my God, yes. <laughs> yeah. um, That's- Avengers uh, executive producer also. He worked on Dawn of the Dead. Scooby-Doo. Yeah, he did Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo movies, so you know this man's like a genius. Yeah, yeah no, that's like I Scooby-Doo. would say that's what his peak, but it clearly <laughs> isn't. Uh, no, but he's like he's been like a huge changing like facet for Marvel and the way that they like inputted Guardians and everything. Like those movies did so well. Like, I, I don't think, think changed... anybody expected them to do that well. Yeah. I think it also changed the way that they were going to have Thor evolve as well, because now Thor is like kind of part of the Guardians. I don't like that. You don't, you don't like, like Thor in the Guardians. Thor in the Guardians, because I thought he was like really serious and all that. Yeah, that's like, well, that's because like the, the directors. Thunder, or yeah. He is, yeah. Lightning. But now he's like a joke, kind of. Yeah, the directors have changed like every single movie. Wait, for wait, him. wait, wait, wait. Is there another Guardians of the Galaxy movie? There's one coming yeah, out. Yeah, there's and one coming out. They it. fired Thor's James Gunn. Yeah. And then, uh, they fired then they, him. Yeah, they fired him. Yeah, they fired him because of the baby jokes. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they fired him and then they rehired him. Yeah, he's back. Oh, he's back. <laughs> Disney okay. was like, nah, come back. Well, if, if I'm not mistaken, that movie would have come out a year before. Like, that movie would have come out a year beforehand. Maybe. Yeah. If he hadn't said some shit on Twitter. No, like he should. He said that shit like a year yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah no, that was a that, they, that was, it a, was while a while ago. ago. Yeah, no, they that from That's weird. We don't have to get up political, but like, that's <laughs> we're not. Weird. We're, we're not getting into it. We're gonna. But, yeah, we're but not the, going the to. thing is, uh, that movie would have come out a year before, a and then while he was like, he was like not contracted to doing the third movie, um, uh, he went to do like got contract to do the super like the Suicide Squad movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then that one got slated till later, like the Guardians. Okay. Is he doing Birds of Prey too, or no? I don't know. I don't know who's doing Birds of Prey. That just looks like a glorified Harley Quinn That's movie. That's kind of what I'm expecting it oh to my. be. Wait, what's that thing that it looks really bad? It's like Batgirl, like oh, show it's or yeah, it's Ruby Rose. It's uh the Batgirl CW show. Yeah. It's uh it's not Barbara though. It's like some other. I don't. I don't. How do you guys version? feel about superhero CW shows? Originally, okay, wait, I so thought like, they what, were like great. The oh, no. Now I yeah. think they're Can trash. Can we list them off? Like The Flash? Arrow. Arrow, Arrow was oh. like the first one. Arrow was crazy because they Arrow. ruined that show. Arrow, yeah, Arrow was so good at first. Arrow was it just amazing. Went, I remember watching the first two it. seasons and I was like, this is great. And then it's like season six. And I was like, what is yeah. happening? Yeah, no, it's trash. Dude. Well, like Arrow's done now. So they were flying they're and they doing the last season. And it's like The Walking Dead. They're like feeding that dead horse. Yeah, they pretty much are. Yeah. Um and then and they it have is, it's I don't have Black anything Lightning. against that's one. Oh yeah, but that's I new, haven't though. seen that either. Though. Yeah, me neither. I stopped watching them. Supergirl, Supergirl, Supergirl used to be in uh, who, who used to make Supergirl and then they uh, CW bought it off. I don't remember. But uh, originally they didn't have it. The new super like the Supergirl now, um, it's uh it's like a very I don't want to say like girly version but it's like a very like low key like not very superhero it's just about like her life versus like her superhero saving 
if yeah. that makes sense. I I it's never like got through the first season. It's like Supergirl. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's not that great. Like by the time Supergirl came out, I kind of like felt like out of it when it came to mm-hmm. the Flash and Arrow because like those movies after like season three get hard to watch. Mm. Yeah. At least I feel that that yeah. way. So is there a connection between like? Oh yeah, they're all connected. Oh, they all have they're crossovers all, all the time, especially all, the Flash and Supergirl. Every year they have like a big crossover mm-hmm. event that's like gets bigger and bigger every year. It's like, yep. yeah. I want to say yeah, and then the one with like the fact that. They have this new like Batgirl or Batwoman. It's Batwoman, I think, with uh, Ruby Rose. Like that's just gonna. I don't know how I feel about it because I love Ruby Rose and I love the concept that it's Batwoman. But like, eh, like yeah, it's it already really going bad. downhill. I don't. Uh. Have you seen? Have you guys seen that one clip of like a preview where she like comes in like a door and like the song is like I'm a woman. No. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. As soon as she like gets like enters this door all dramatically, the song in the background is like, "I'm a woman." It's like, okay, you couldn't get like hit the nail on the head like anymore. yeah, wow, but, like <laughs> like so on the nose. Like still on the topic of like CW superhero shows, like I think that that's a good example of like there's this one show called what is it called? Um, Legends of Tomorrow. All right. Yes, that's and another it, one. And Legends of Tomorrow, it's like it's it, it's it's one of these it's one of these shows. That it it has like the same basic formula as like Arrow and Flash and yeah. all the others, but like talking directly about like R-rated characters being like, or sort of switched into like thir- PG thirteen. Mm. Oh wait, wait. <laughs> it was sort of sort of being going into P- like PG thirteen and stuff like that. There's this character called Constantine, right? Mm-hmm. And like like Logan or like Deadpool, like we're talking about, those characters have to have R rated like R rated um R rated like movies in order yeah. to like portray the character correctly. And Constantine uh, originally had his like own series. I can't remember who produ- like what company produced it, but the thing is, the thing is. They they brought that character back for Legends of Tomorrow, and now he's like, I feel like he he's washed washed off because yeah. originally and they did like one season of the character of Constantine, like he had his own like one off series, but they canceled it. I can't remember why they canceled it. I couldn't tell you either. Yeah, and they brought it. He they brought him to Legends of Tomorrow, and after that, just like they kind of like washed that character off, and it just became. Well, just, it just went into the same too. formula, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a childish show in general, though. Like, they start off being very, like, like the opposite of R-rated. Like, okay, it's so all very childish, and, like, and it's made for, like, younger have kids. To have died at least once. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> They're just so, all in there. To, like, bring it back around, like, do we think that movies where, and movies and TV where they can't, like, they're not R-rated or, like, they're more family-oriented. Do we think those are, like, doomed to fail with, like, superhero as far as superheroes is concerned? No, because no, like, no, of the whole MCU. Yeah, like, MCU. Yeah. they're killing it right They're now. really they're not, bomb right now. failing, I guess, yeah. But, like, I think it's I not think fail- It's the it's opposite of failing, failing like, by far. Not failing, like, <laughs> when it comes to, like, movies like Joker or, like, just, like, right now what's happening... I think studios are going to start to consider, like, Disney's going to be like, you know what, maybe there is a market here. And, like, before that, with Deadpool, I feel like that was, like, the great stride being like, you know what, like, let's open up to do this. But, like, hitting that $1 billion mark on a movie for profit, and what's the original, like, uh, like uh, budget, like, $55 million? Something like that. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, something like that. It's like, this movie has insane <laughs> profits for what it is. Yeah, no, it does. And yeah. I feel like, as a studio, you, th- uh, there's gonna be, s- they're gonna start like reconsidering like what's gonna, you know, like what's what yeah. what they're gonna like produce and like it's not not being limited by like a PG thirteen rating because like, right. it's now it's not like oh completely financially sound because now like you can produce like R rated movies and still have like a billion dollar profit. Do you think, think if you do it right? If right. you do it right. Yeah, that's the thing. Do we think, like... Todd it, Phillips just did it well. <laughs> yeah. No, Todd Phillips killed it on this one. And it's like, is this just, like... I don't know. Did he just, like... I don't want to say f- a fluke, because obviously we have Joaquin Phoenix, an amazing actor. Todd Phillips, a great director. You know, we had, there's a great team on there. It's not that they just, like, could never do that again. But, like, do you think with... If this happens, where like it starts a trend where like more R-rated superhero movies are coming out, or maybe more standalone movies, I don't know. Like, are w- is anything gonna be as good as the Joker? Like, 
that hit a, out of the box a billion dollars the first time. I think you could have said the same thing about Deadpool. Yeah. You mean like it yeah. was like it was like it went to being like the highest rated R like rated R film and I think the same conversation was had when that came out being like oh is any superhero movie that's gonna be R rated is gonna be able to top that again and like like now you can see that it did clearly it did yeah, yeah. clearly yeah and um, it's like and, and it's not to say like it didn't have like very specialized personnel or like producers and like people working on that movie that made it like incredibly well made like it's an incredibly well made movie like it's beautifully shot the color the color grading is amazing like everything is just perfect about that movie but at, but at the same time it's like as long as you hire the right people to do the right things yeah and p- give them like enough budget and like creativity and yeah. like let them out to do what they want to do that's a big thing creative freedom yeah so, like, like that creative freedom because like after Jared Leto did whatever he did with the Joker, oh, good God. <laughs> I feel like so the, the character was just like you know left out to dry, and then they were yeah. like you know they're just like the studios being like you know what Todd Phillips you, you d- take it d- t- <laughs> you know what do it do your thing man and they were like all right let's do it and then yeah. they ended up doing something beautiful with it. Right. Okay, so the thing is with kind of going back to one of your like messages you made before with Deadpool as an r-rated movie it was very viable that was r-rated and that's what made it like so much money was because the humor is what made it r-rated but i feel for joker it was less so about the violence that makes it like um such like a billion dollar worth movie you know um it's like the political messages in it and like how it like I don't know how to exactly like you know, say this, I but feel it like, like they, pushes they... ideas into people's minds like in a way that clicks with them and then it's kind of controversial in a way and then yeah. it leaves you thinking. So then people talk about it and other people want to see it and then they go and that's how they made the billion dollars. Whereas like, was it really the fact that it was R-rated what made it such a good movie or was it just the fact that it got you thinking? Whereas with Deadpool, it's yeah. like, yeah, the R-rated was because you know the I don't humor. particularly yeah. think that's the case like what I think the R rating does is just gives you more creative freedom like like do you guys remember that scene in in the Joker where they're like these guys go what to the uh, go to Joker's apartment and then he stabs one and the other right. like can't can't oh, reach oh my god yeah, yeah. you know what like that, <laughs> that, that, like, <laughs> that is so fucked up no and, sure but, but like, like when you see that and she like that sh- cannot happen yeah. in a PG thirteen yeah. movie. No, of course, yeah. it would be very like censored or exactly hidden and just implied. But is that like the reason why it got so many viewers and people coming in to see one. it? Yeah, I don't know if either one is though, because like I like I feel like the political messages were a, a big part of it as well. well like sort of because like it kind of capitalized on like a feeling that's mm. that's in the air right now, you know. Um, you know, like all the controversy that happened right. like yeah but i feel like people place too much importance on that like people are really people were really concerned about like what the like what people were going to do after they saw the yeah. joker or something yeah. they had like extra cops at the theater yeah. and shit. And oh I, I wasn't even you thinking know, about like, that but i thought yeah. it was weird for example like they thought that of the joker because of like all the, like they saw like the how unsafe it would be or something like that mm-hmm. because it will happen with that shooting and the dark night or the That's dark night rises yeah. but at the same time they didn't do the same thing with like suicide squad yeah. and joker was in that movie i think i think the reason that people so and and suicide squad was a pg-13 movie mm-hmm. yeah well does well, that, that here's matter you know maybe but but i think the reason why with particularly with the joker movie was because it was about the Joker and it was like yeah, sort of a character really study. So it was like you almost get to like know this guy and like kind of feel sorry for him in a way. And like, yeah. no, you definitely do. At, like, yeah. at, there's a point in the movie where you feel very and sorry for you him. You feel mm-hmm. happy for him too. Yeah. Like, for a moment, you know, and you just like, yeah. kinda, you can't, you catch yourself feeling happy. <laughs> you for kinda, him. You're like, you're yeah, murderous for rampage, but at the same like, time, like, <laughs> that's a bad yeah. thing. Like, like let's like, chill out like, here. <laughs> like the film story, you know, everyone loves the film story. Yeah, and like, and, and at first you kind of forget what movie you're at, you know? Yeah. You're like, oh wow, That's true. like he's he's struggling. Oh, Wait no, a minute, he's... this is a DC character. Hold yeah. up. Like, <laughs> for a second you think like you're kind of watching a movie about like a, a struggling stand-up comedian, yeah. you know? That's yeah. like just trying to make it out of the shit. That's and true. then you realize that that's not the movie you're watching at all. <laughs> and then I feel like the reason that people were so concerned about it was like 
oh yeah, like people are gonna people are gonna think they're the Joker. Yeah, and exactly. They can Society, do I can kill people if I want to. <laughs> yeah, I was I was really concerned when they announced this like the movie The Joker. Like it was like I was, just I, was so, I was too. Dude. Like I was so fearful about like what's gonna happen. It was like. Uh, I didn't know much about Todd Phillips beforehand or Joaquin Phoenix for that matter and then they announced that he was going to play him and I was like "Uh, I don't see it like I don't see it and they were like and then they announced it's going to be R-rated and I was like after Suicide Squad I just left a bad taste in my mouth but I was like I was like you know what you can't I, and I was just, like, piggybacking off of what, like, everybody else was saying. I was like, oh, you can't unnes- not necessarily make uh, a superhero movie or a, a movie about a super, like, a super villain yeah. and be it R-rated and then just be like, oh, it's R-rated just because it is, just because, like, to be trendy or whatever. Yeah. But at the same time, I saw this movie from Joaquin Phoenix that, uh, that he made last year that was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's You're Never Really Here. Mm-hmm. And oh yeah! Have you heard about that movie? I've heard of it. I need to watch it. It's on my IMDb watch list. That movie. <laughs> I was like, you have one of those. I was, I, yeah, I do. <laughs> you know this man has an IMDb watch list. Number five. <laughs> yeah. We're never really here. Yeah, it looks good. But uh, I, I was like, I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna give him the benefit of doubt. I didn't know much about his career before that, to be completely honest. And then I was like, and I heard that that movie very much assimilates to like the uh, the psychological element that of the movie The Joker. Mm. Then I watched that and I was dumbfounded. Like that, he did a, such an amazing job. Then a, then after watching that movie, I was like, you know, what? he's gonna kill it. Like he's gonna do so well as the the character of the Joker because yeah. he has that ability to just uh, portray a person in such like mental mayhem. Yeah, he was, and I think because of like. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix is like superb acting and everything like that. Everything just played so well in that movie. And I think the uh, like R rating made it like so much better because they had that freedom, you know what, to like do whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see. One movie we haven't talked about too much Logan. Um, Logan, I feel like. <coughs> Why I had a hard time. Maybe it was just because of violence, but I had a hard time understanding why Logan was R rated. Like it was violent, but like other than that, I mean, maybe you think maybe it was that's... piggybacking off of Deadpool. Yeah. Well, no. I. I think they could have done a PG thirteen movie. <laughs> yeah, that that could have been PG thirteen. I don't know. I it, I think it was purely the I, violence. I think it was purely the violence too. Because there was a lot of blood and like, I don't know, like, <laughs> man, like watching that little girl like <laughs> go like ape shit on these <laughs> that's true that was pretty crazy but I don't know I don't I don't know that if I was a parent that I'd be like oh like you can't go watch Logan you know I mean it yeah. just doesn't seem that bad and I mean yeah I don't know wait 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 do you know about the like the F-bomb rule Right, that's so true. So that's what if that was the reason why it was rated R instead of What's PG thirteen? In get, an like, R movie, you bucks. get yeah, like in a PG thirteen <laughs> movie, you get one or two, something like that. But if you have more than that in your script, then you're gonna be R rated. Yeah. Really? So it doesn't matter like yeah. if it's gore or anything like that. Like if you have that in your script, then it's just automatically yeah, R rated. So what him. if that was why? Because like <laughs> you know how Wolverine is like that kind of dude. <laughs> So it's like, they say, there you go. They, they probably just said fuck accidentally five times, and they're like, yeah, uh, yeah, no, that's all improv. Yeah, it's Hugh Jackman, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like, they it's added, his character. They so like, it, what and if then they, they were like, oh shit, that yeah, guys. Not to uh, at all. I guess we're R rated now. I guess. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say R rated. Nobody's gonna know why it's R rated except because of you. That's the only reason. Kind of off topic, but can we talk about Professor X in that movie? I don't. I was so. I was so thrown off by his whole thing in that movie. I like the first thing you see him once, say I don't in that movie it. is English muffin. <laughs> I do not <laughs> remember this weird. movie actually. I watched it, but I do not remember it. But I like, know what you're except like about. the desert you know what I'm scene. About? Yeah, he like, was like, he was like, uh, he has to, like dementia or something. Yeah, he has, right? like, he's like, like, he's going senile, so he's just like annoying. No, <laughs> is it like, he's um, in the back, like I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> I, I can read minds. I can tell that you're stressed about the bad guys coming to kill you. Is it the OG <laughs> one, or is it, like, McAvoy, or whatever his last name is? McAvy, whatever. He's, uh, is it the original Patrick original? Stewart. Yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Is it him? It's okay. Stewart, yeah. Nice. But he's, like, all old and shit. He's just a burden. He uh, literally oh, is. Wait, I remember this moving out. Metal. Sorry, I got, like, my x Men movies mixed up. I remember this. <laughs> like, I was so confused. He's, like, dragging uh, him around, I just right? feel like they could have done more with the exposition of the movie. Yeah? Like, and, and, like, we're talking specifically about Logan, like... 
Yeah, I feel like the R rating was a little unnecessary. It was probably because of Hugh Jackman. Like, yeah, <laughs> like 100%. Huge, it, it's, that's it's probably just why. Hugh Jackman <laughs> yeah, saying whatever I, the I fuck you wanted. Right. Exactly. But, I mean, it got good-ass reviews, like 93% on Rotten Tomatoes, and it made, it w- had a budget of $97 million, and it made 16, 619 So, I mean, it did, it definitely did well, but... Like, but it's also like the, the way they marketed it, it was like, oh, this is the last movie that our lovely Hugh Jackman's gonna star as Wolverine. Oh, lies. You know, like Wait, everybody like lie? shed a tear. I, it's probably gonna be a lie. He's I mean, back. come on. He's he's already, he's well, back. Didn't he already he's come back? back? He probably no, no, he wasn't back for the the uh, the what is it called? Yeah. Uh, the Phoenix one, Dark Phoenix. Yeah, was he in that one? I is didn't it dark, see it. I heard really bad reviews yeah. about that one. Oh, yeah, I heard really movie. bad stuff about it. That movie's never we're gonna talk about that in the next episode. Not in the next episode, in another episode, because I can talk about that movie for an hour. Definitely. Worst of the decade. Oh my god! Spoilers. Spoiler alert. Is it actually gonna be in that list though? Like, was it that bad? Cool. Uh huh. But yeah. Mm, okay that but, sucks like Logan <laughs> has good reviews and it's not a bad movie it's it's yeah. i think it's beautifully shot yeah i, I like the movie at least my personal taste logan yeah yeah i i mean i liked it too i i mean to be fair like we kind of like fell asleep in the middle of that movie you fell yeah asleep no in the i feel like i did too because i watched like, I was a like, whole like chunk love that missing movie. from yeah. my head Let me just give take a nap yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, <laughs> fucked up. we fucked up we watched it in bed and but then, <laughs> but then after like we we went to like youtube and looked at like uh recaps of, oh my like, god looked at recaps of the movie <laughs> ending explained <laughs> yeah like logan ending explained yeah. logan recap like we just watched a bunch of those i mean yeah i don't know it, no like it was a good movie. I honestly wish they would have made it more about the little girl. I mean, it was kind of about. That's, her. that's what I thought. Remember when we said, I, I this, thought the little girl. This okay. motherfucker. I don't know. I don't know. She much thought about Logan her. was the little girl. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think Wait. that Logan's the little girl? <laughs> she was like, oh, that's I wow. X Men or Wolverine or anything. So I went into this movie thinking Logan was a little girl and that the movie was about her. And I'm just like, oh, there's. Logan. So did you think Hugh the Jackman was just her, like a whole other character? Like Hugh Jackman Logan. is a little girl. Yeah. No. I didn't know that. Just, I didn't know the movie she just takes off a mask and it's just huge. Wait, 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 wait. How many X Men movies have you actually seen? Zero. zero. You've oh, seen zero okay. X Men well, movies? Well, that explains a lot. Why would you have a, That's like watching the last movie in a yeah, series. And I said that and I was like, I think I should have some. You need to watch all that's the That's like of them watching the last okay. Hobbit movie and then just being like, okay, okay. that's it. Yeah, really. You have time to watch every X Men movie. Yeah, okay. so he's like, he's like, you don't have to watch any of these movies. No, 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 no. Absolutely watch all of them. It's like zero context. There's yeah, like, I, I don't remember which one it was, like but it's the one where it's like Harry past. Potter movie without knowing who the fuck he is. <laughs> Wait yeah, a minute. Like the girl was <laughs> that moment when you think Edward Cullen is Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, but it was like, I mean, I'm sure like if we went back and watched the old X-Men movies, you'd, you'd see Professor X and be like, Wait, that's the guy? The yeah, guy sure that would go. be. You probably have such a bad impression of of, bad of, impression. of, of yeah, Professor really. X. Yeah, yeah, no, he's, he's so a really cool guy. guy. Like he's in that um, movie, but in the rest of them, he's not bad. He's no, a pretty. He's I think he does a great job. Sac- didn't he sacrifice himself for the for? Oh wait, no, no, he didn't. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that that's spoiler alert. We should put a spoiler alert. alert at the beginning of this, like. Oh yeah, we probably should. Should just have a like record a little thing like, hey, spoiler alert for Logan, Joker, or whatever. All of the above. Behind the scenes. I just want to sort of talk about the boys a little bit. Oh yeah. I really have nothing to say about it because I have, you have no not idea. nothing to say about it. <laughs> I, I've never seen it. Like I don't even know really the premise. Is Seth of it. Rogen? Wait, I'm just gonna check with my producer. Is Seth Rogen really one of the creators? Yeah. Yeah. Really. Yeah, with, along with I Evan not Goldberg, know his um, writing partner. No relation. Well, <laughs> they probably thoroughly enjoyed. On a scale of one to ten, how good is it? The the show? Yes. Oh, I I'll give it like a seven. On okay. episode two. Then that's yeah, worth I'm watching. Go with a seven. <laughs> okay. I started episode one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I started on episode. He's like eight. I'm working my ben way just backwards. Episode, <laughs> ben just watched episode seven and then he just came in to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, you can start on episode nine. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same thing. But the uh, yeah. Yeah. You don't need to know what's I going on. I watched Game of Thrones backwards. It was really good. <laughs> 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 it's just it was really bad at first and then it got better. <laughs> Yeah, just really kept bad. getting better <laughs> <laughs> watching the the walking dead backwards Same it's thing. amazing <laughs> it's better and better every season <laughs> man like the world just pieces itself back together i'm so <laughs> <Magic. confused. laughs> no but yeah um 
like looking at the comparison, what what what's it been like? Kick Ass came out in two thousand ten, and I think yeah. that was like good example of a superhero, mo- like already superhero movie. Yeah. And then it's been like nine years since it came out, and then we have like a show like The Boys and The Joker, and I feel like the R rating gives a lot of creative freedom, and like in its uses. Like, it doesn't necessarily mean that movie's going to be good. Yeah. Like, no, because no, you can no. easily make a good movie in a PG-13 rating. But, like, it's it doesn't make any difference. But at the same time, when you're trying to interpret, when you're trying to interpret, like, like super macabre characters and, like, or, like, the comics of the boys, that's, like, insane. Yeah, there's a point where you, you can't just, you can't just tone it down. I mean, like. Because if not, you're not being, like, loyal to the what it actually is, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. I Yeah, like, with something like The Boys or, like, or Deadpool or even The Joker, like, you're doing yourself a disservice. And I think that might have been, that might have actually partially, and not all the way, but that might have been partially why Suicide Squad was so bad. Because it was, like, marketed as, like, a family, like, kind of like, let's all go watch this together. But also Suicide Squad looks more like a trailer like a two-hour trailer right, that does a movie. Right, right. To something It, it coming is because up, the, yeah. the, the, the post-production house that made it, or, like, gave the final cut, is a... They make trailers. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So, wait, that was that whole thing was edited by a trailer company? <laughs> I, I just nodded to that Ben. That makes so much sense, yes. though, now, two like, knowing trailer. that, for real. It was all a two-hour trailer for Joaquin's <laughs> Joker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah, just pretty much. It, it just it, it, if you look at the way that movie is stitched together, like you're like, what the fuck it's happened? Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just like showing like all these villains, and, like, all and it's the like graphic this is all effects, Batman's it, yeah, gonna it's just, like, like he's showing gonna beat the them up eventually, of everybody and then it's like for like forty nah. minutes, and then it's like them fighting for twenty, and yeah. the other That's what true. ten is like sort of corny dialogue between characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah my and biggest- it's like the like kind of with like the it's not narration but it's like pops up on the screen it's like this is who this is there's yeah. superpowers yeah exactly that looks like are. a fucking They're trailer like, 20 minutes saying so what are we a suicide squad <laughs> <laughs> whoa suicide, suicide squad. squad cut the black butch <laughs> at the end he's just like yeah. catch me in Gemini man <laughs> <laughs> catch me in Gemini man oh god <laughs> <laughs> no, my biggest problem. Who convinced actually, Will Smith to be in this movie, dude? I think it was Will Smith, and he was. I, I, yeah, I think I, I he convinced himself he, yeah. to be in this. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at himself in the mirror, being, the being mirror, like, oh, like, like, "Man, yeah, you gotta do this." He was like, "There's no way you can do a movie of you fighting yourself." And then he's like responding to himself. He's like, "Yes, I can. Watch me. This is bullshit. You can't tell me I can't do it. Fuck you, Will. Hey, no, fuck you." <laughs> the Will in the mirror was like, "You haven't been good since Fresh Prince." And he was like, "What about Men in Black?" And he was like, no. "Fuck." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like so and Gollum, like fighting, <laughs> yeah, he's fucking like, himself. <laughs> on set, he's like method acting. He's yeah, like, I'm voices. the evil Will. No, I'm the good Will. <laughs> Yes, have like a special voice with it too, though. You're like, dude, you're dead shot. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, okay, but. can we all agree though that Will Smith peaked as Oscar in Shark Tale? Shark Tale. <laughs> Shark Tale. <laughs> we all love oh, Shark Tales. I hope that's Will a Smith staple. Is okay after Gemini okay, Man. Okay. Wait, I haven't watched Gemini Man. I haven't either. I don't. We plan we to. accidentally watched the pre uh, the like yeah. the first part of it. Is it good? Accidentally? So far, how did, how no. does that happen? Okay, so we may or may not have stolen the Joker <laughs> from society. <laughs> Damn. And that is to say, Arrested. we snuck into the movie. So, yeah. so we we went to the wrong theater, and we like <clears throat> because they don't have it on the TVs outside the theater anymore. Mm. saying like what movie it is mm. because i guess they want to make it harder for you to see <laughs> <it again. laughs> so we go in we found a theater we're like oh this has got to be it so we right. sit down we sit through all the previews <laughs> Every oh. one, we we're like yes yeah, joker and then the first thing that happens is it pops up gemini man and we're just oh. like fuck <laughs> we get up and leave did you have to watch previews again no actually we got lucky we came in right at the beginning of the oh at least that's nice. good yeah <laughs> that's <good. laughs> yeah, that's good. But no, um, well, I was gonna say something about. So you only saw the title screen, so you didn't see anything like about we it. Saw, that was like b- good or like bad. A little bit, ba- little bit past that, we yeah, stayed. They were like, like a train station or something. 
Yeah, he anything. was like waiting on a hill to like shoot somebody. I don't know. I don't even know. Yeah, I don't know. I was, I was, just, like, okay. I mean, I was like, oh my god, no, no, no. <laughs> not this. No, it was. We're bad. like anything but Gemini. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for real. No, I remember seeing the preview for that, and I was like, the CGI is just. Oh God, help us all. <laughs> Will Smith CGI, like him in what was that Aladdin uh-huh. with the blue thing? Yeah, what was going on with him. It was just CGI. about as bad, honestly, with okay. quality. I hope he's okay. <laughs> okay, but wait, I, I know this is really off topic, but. On the Don't subject, of, we, no, fuck our it. producers just looking it. at us, being like, "What yeah, are sorry, you Monica, talking about? Please get back <laughs> on look, topic." Have you guys heard of this movie, Sex Tuplets? Yes. No. <laughs> wait, oh, I'm googling oh that movie. Wait, what? Please look it up. It's. Please. If you think Gemini Man is bad, oh my god. <laughs> what? The oh my fuck? god. I got six now. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Have you guys when seen the original like Inspector Gadget movie, like from Disney? No. Okay, so there's like it's Matthew Broderick. And it's, like, him being an Inspector Gadget. And then the evil guy in the movie, he makes, like, a fake Inspector Gadget. And he looks like a very creepy version of him. Did but you it's guys not see- CGI. And it's, like, Gemini Man has the same quality of CGI as this movie. And, like, you got to look it up. It's, like, so really So this wild. is the movie Six <laughs> Tuplets. Yeah, the movie yeah. Six Tuplets. He you guys plays don't know. six Marlon characters. It stars Marlon oh, Wayans, no. Marlon Wayans, Marlon Wayans, <laughs> Marlon Wayans, Marlon Wayans, and Marlon Wayans. As six different people. As six different did people. Did you guys see the mo- the last movie he did for Netflix? It was called, like, Naked or something? No. Wait, what? It is. Oh, God, sh- man. Is it? I hope he's doing Is it quality? same quality? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody check on Will Smith and Marlon Wayans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's called Naked. This is the movie. It's just him. Oh, it's him I naked. love how it's just him it's just naked. Him naked <laughs> throughout, just like, naked. Uh, well, I can't even explain okay. that I movie. Mean, that movie is just so. Uh, you got what was look, advertised. This, this is, I mean, just, like, that's just, what you paid just for. Just him, move, like, naked for two hours. Okay, so. <laughs> is that no, it? That's, like, not the, that's not the actual plot. I don't want to bash his movie. Yeah, like, but, what's uh, the plot? The, oh, let me read the synopsis. <laughs> it's just, it's just like a live cam. It's like, <laughs> it's like all right, day. it's like, all right, it's like, <laughs> it's like Groundhog Day. Oh my god, you have to like donate. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like Groundhog Day. But he's naked. <laughs> but it's Marlon Wayans and he's naked. <laughs> wait, it's gra- yeah. So he like, wait, what's okay? So what does he do that makes it like that right, he repeats right, his right. day or something? All right, so I'm gonna read yeah, the the synopsis. So. Uh, Marlon Wayans is all set to marry this girl of his dreams, but can't quite get to the altar. He finds himself caught in a naked. time loop, walking up naked in an waking up naked in a hotel elevator over and over again. What? That's, That's so it? stupid. That's it. I want to marry my wife, but I'm naked, <laughs> naked in an elevator. I can't stop being naked. Oh God. Wait, wait, wait. So what's like? How does he like go back? Like how does it restart? Like with I, I watched this. I'm 100 percent sure I watched this movie twice. Mm-hmm. And cannot remember how it ends. First of all, I cannot remember how this movie ends. Yeah. <laughs> like in Happy Death Day, it's like she dies, and then in Groundhog Day, I'm pretty sure it's very similar. So it's like what? Oh no, Groundhog Day he doesn't die. He figures out he, he just has to stop being an asshole, and then he goes back. And, <laughs> wait, no spoiler alert. No, you guys have 20 years to watch yeah. that. Movie. <laughs> Never mind. But like the premise is like something happens, something and then happens, it like restarts. Restart. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, what? I absolutely am positive that I watched this movie twice. Yeah. Cannot remember what happens. <laughs> <laughs> like, he finds his clothes. He finds his clothes at yeah. restart. <laughs> He's like, oh my god, I love your clothes. I love you so much. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for for <laughs> being here and yeah, don't be <laughs> <laughs> That's that's Watch an naked. incredible incredible segue to end yes. this this, <laughs> this episode. Oh Flawless victory. Oh, <laughs> yes, sir. Um, yeah. Well, uh, if you liked uh, uh, this episode of Film for Thought, please come back and listen. Um, follow us on Instagram at underscore Film for Thought and on Twitter at underscore Film for Thought. <laughs> Damn, I didn't even know that. Yeah, I'm going to have to follow that now. Thanks, guys. (laughs) Sorry, sorry. (laughs) Repping for the team here. Um, uh, Yeah, we knew about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Well, (laughs) thank you so much for being here and talking about this. um, Talking about Joaquin Phoenix and his beautiful performance in The Joker. Joaquin Phoenix is beautiful himself. Yeah. The movie was beautiful. And talking about the Marlon Wayans and yeah. Will Smith. Oh six different people. Um, well, Again, well, yeah. Please just, check on them. I just want to... <laughs> Someone, please. Make really sure they're same. okay. You just want to do your, your final plugs again in the circle? Oh, yeah. What? Just be like, what's up? Hey, goodbye? Yeah. yeah. Kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, basically. Right. Talk about, like... Like something you're yeah, something you're you're doing or or just Is there like, anything that we got coming up that we want to know? That I don't know. Do you have something? Do you you want to plug? 
No, not really. I mean, All right. just, That's just, cool. just <laughs> you want to know what's up, just follow my Instagram. I yeah. post everything on there pretty much. Or my Snapchat. I make really long Snapchat stories. <laughs> They're very enjoyable. <laughs> um, you already know my Instagram, at Ben M. Goldberg, but uh, let's see. I, if you go to Loyola and you're listening to this, uh, I do a weekly skit group that we just started. Michael's a part of it. Carmen's a part of it. Uh, and, you know, anyone who wants to be can be a part of it. So if you do go to Loyola or Tulane, if you're in the New Orleans area and you're listening to this, uh, hit me up on Instagram and just say, hey, I want to be a part of it. I'll put you in the group chat. And we do it, like, once a week. Super fun, like, one-minute videos. And, yeah, we're just trying to, like... Yeah, practice. skit groups are really fun. Yeah, it's dude. Just, so much fun. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's a hoot. It's a hoot. It's a hoot. It's a holler. It's a laugh. It's a hoot it's a and a half. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's practice. Wonderful practice. Yeah, it's it's wonderful it is fun. wonderful practice to yeah. anybody who wants to, like, learn about the industry or, like, how to make stuff. Yeah, exactly. Beginning to end. Wonderful practice with no stakes at all no, no stakes no stakes, no stakes. Yeah. that's no our stakes. slogan no stakes yeah, yeah. That's yep. <laughs> exactly so yeah that's that's pretty much it i think um yeah all right thank you very much carmen um i don't have much to say at all all right <laughs> uh, no you can follow me on instagram it's carmen k dunning all right that sounds Crazy good there. uh i just want to thank i just want to thank once more it's crazy check it out <laughs> just want to thank once more our uh our artist that does yeah. our logo and yeah. uh and like our art Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh sergio diaz <laughs> now you can follow Hell his yeah. instagram at the slurpy art portfolio Love he does it. amazing art he posts like almost every week he's great yeah. um and uh, sammy beal uh you can follow him at samuel dot beal he does yeah. our music so yeah. thank you Yes. I'd like to thank our producer also, Monica yeah. Vega, for yeah. helping us yeah, out. Monica. Sitting behind Monica. us, keeping Monica. us on track. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At one point yeah. during the... Yeah. Thank you for yeah. sending yeah. us those on text messages. Point, we appreciate it. She was just like pointing it. at her screen being like, <laughs> <laughs> please stay on topic. Yeah. Yeah. Texted all of us like, please stay please on topic. Please stay on topic. <laughs> <laughs> so. Not going to happen, sorry. <laughs> thank you, Monica. Well, I'd like to thank everybody here for joining me in the first episode. And I hope to see your faces again. Hell yeah. Thank you. Yay. Bye-bye.